Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God, God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. 
and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And that was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be light in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light the night. And the stars, God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of the every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in it, fruit, in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Canticle 13 responsibly by half verse. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are our praise, praise, glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and I exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated in between the cherubim. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and I exalt you forever. A reading from St. Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. 
Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be all, with you, all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There are some things that it is very difficult to understand or demonstrate. Why do so many people like Reese's Pieces? Why does your mother love you? I mean, she does. But unless you're a real narcissist, there's no real good reason for it. It's just a thing that is. And how do you prove that your mother loves you? But you just sort of know it, don't you? Well, the world is full of all sorts of things, and we would love to be able to explain them all. But not all of them can be explained so readily, although they can be really important to us, of which knowing God as one God and as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is part of those things which we don't necessarily want to be able to wrap our mind around, but we do need to be able to relate to God and be sent by God into the world. There are plenty of things that I think are hard to comprehend. So I learned in my high school physics um, that light it is both a particle and a wave. So at one point, it's just this little dot. There are physical things that are light, and they travel very fast. 
And you can tell they're physical things because actually they get bent and curved with gravity around the Earth. So people were very impressed when they worked out that Einstein was right because they could measure the effect and see what had happened. And yet at the same time, light isn't a particle at all. It's an electromagnetic wave which behaves like a wave and you can split in all sorts of amazing ways. And those two things don't make sense at the same time to my brain. So if you're able to explain it to me afterwards, please do. But I do believe perhaps it's one of those things where we have to say both of these things are true. That's how we know light. And we know light's one thing, but it, it, it actually it isn't something we can wrap our heads around readily. Now, I think it should be something we can wrap our heads around readily because it belongs to the created world. And we ought to be able to observe the created world and understand it, uh, and uh, even measure things like why people like Reese's Pieces so much. There ought to be some kind of chemical explanation somewhere. But when it comes to the nature of God, I think it's very problematic if human beings even wanted to try and get their head around explaining exactly how God works. If you have an explanation for who God is and how God fits together in his own nature, what are you doing? You're, you're trying to create an understanding of who God is that can fit within the confines of your human brain and imagination. Give it up, folks, because as soon as you've managed to do it, you've created something that is no more than an idol, a figment of your imagination. God has to be allowed to be bigger than you, more than you can comprehend. But the mystery of the Bible, from the first pages which we heard, read beautifully by Dane, thank you, onwards, is that the world hasn't been left alone. The, the world and I, I always, no, no disrespect, but pure blood atheists, I mean, it's a, it's a stretch, isn't it? Um, because everything in this world is contingent on something else in this world. I, I push you, you fall over. There is a cause and effect. And, and yet the world m must be caused by something. So, so I have no in time in my imagination for people who write off the idea of there being something beyond the cause and effect created order that we see that, that somehow is responsible as a prime mover for everything that we see. If you only get that far, which I think you can get that far entirely reasonably, uh, then you don't have a God that you can access. You just have a distant God who threw the world into being and uh, we just get on with it from that point on. That was a very popular way to think about things in the 18, 1800s. It, it led to all sorts of uh, interesting philosophical movements. But the story of the Bible is a story of God choosing to make himself known. I carefully use his preferred pronoun because we actually know that he isn't really a boy because he says in that passage in Genesis uh, that God created us in his image Male and female, he created them. But somehow, God is revealed through the very multi-gendered aspect of human nature. That somehow, God's imprint is left on human beings, male and female, and probably somewhere in the middle, whatever that works itself out to be. Uh, and so you see something of the imprint of God just in human life, although we're not God. And, and then in that Genesis story, you, you see that actually God is active in the world. And so you, you hear that at the beginning of creation, the, the wind of God, which can be translated just as well as the Spirit of God, is moving over the waters. So you learn that God isn't just distant, although he must be, but he's also sort of present through his Spirit at work in the world, first of all in creation and then in inspiring gifts and skills in human beings. And, and then you, you discover that actually God 
can speak into the world rather than be separate from it. And God's word appears right in those beginning pages of creation. And John, in the beautiful prologue to his gospel, will explain that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we know God revealed in these different ways. And Jesus will explain in John's gospel that that from the very beginning, he and the Father were one. Not Jesus, the human being, but the Word of God which became incarnate in the Lord Jesus. So somehow there is relationship within the nature of God that Jesus speaks about, which is more than we can explain. And it becomes difficult for us to think about the way that God has relationship built into God's nature, which Jesus speaks about and which he participates in, and get our heads around the fact that God is one at the same time. And so the history of the church getting its head around that is really, I think, the history of the church trying to explain why people like Reese's Pieces and doing a bad job of it. Trying to come up with all sorts of explanations or analogies or trying to reduce what seems impossible because our human mind can't grasp it and make it something our human mind can grasp. You could read the story of 300 years of, uh, of, of, of good and intelligent thinking that leads you down a whole pile of rabbit trails that you don't want to go down in the end. Uh, but the result is that at the end of a whole pile of thinking about what God might be like, uh, the church just declares we can't know what God is like because it's mysterious. But we do know that God has been revealed um, in these different ways. And we do know that God is one. And we can't reduce or collapse one into the other thing. Karl Rahner, the great uh, Catholic theologian, explained it like this uh, last century, that really, if you want to know what God is like, God is genuinely, in, in God's self, is the way that God has made himself known. How God has been revealed in the scriptures is all that we are capable of knowing about God. And through the created order, and through the Holy Spirit given to us and dwelling within us. So that takes us to our New Testament readings. We, had, uh, we have very little sort of Trinitarian references in the New Testament, so we have two very thin little readings, uh, but I think they give us some clue about what we're to do about our understanding of who God is, who's made himself known to us in the pages of Scripture and throughout creation and in our lives. So the first reading from Corinthians teaches us something about relationship with God. It's, it's given away in a little sign-off to the end of the letter, where Paul, at the end of his letter to the church in Corinth, the end of the second letter, uh, writes the equivalent of, hope your Aunt Maisie as well, lots of love, Paul, except he gives a longer explanation of who he's greeting, and then he says, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's, it's, a bit of, it's, a, it's a sort of a greeting that we sometimes use together in prayer and have at the end of evening prayer in the liturgy there. And I think it reveals something about that relationship-building aspect of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're called to be in relationship with God, not because we're as good as God or we're as holy as God, but we're called into relationship with God because God died for us in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that all the ways in which our muddled lives, which are full of good things and bad things, fall short of God's glory, might be taken in the life of Jesus through death and resurrection. Someone once said to me that, that grace stands for God's riches at Christ's expense. That's a lovely phrase, isn't it? God's riches at Christ's expense. God wants to know you. And that's the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. The God who is described actually not just as somebody who loves, but somebody who is love in John's letters. The God who is mysterious and beyond human knowing nevertheless wants the best for you. That's why we're able to pray, our Father, not just mysterious in heaven, 
but our Father in heaven. God's chosen to make God known in your life and in your world. And the fellowship, the koinonia of the Holy Spirit. The, the, the God in you through his Holy Spirit who's able to make God known to you is also the grounds of your unity with one another. That actually we share a fellowship together of those who have come to know the presence of God at work in our lives. How can we know the presence of God at work in our lives? Because we've been made in the image of God, male and female. And, and therefore, with God's spirit at work in us, we can know who God is and begin to experience and live his life with one another. And then the other reading tells us not just about relationship, but about our mission in the world. We're sent out. Jesus calls his disciples, says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, and therefore go. I love the St. James prayer at the end of our liturgy, which reminds us that we spend more time out there than we do in here. Uh, we spend time in here not to huddle away from everything out there, as if the world is a terrible, dark, scary place that's a little daunting and a little respite for an hour or so on Sunday morning is a nice thing. No, uh, we come in here in order that God might send us out there uh, to be his presence at work in the world. And as Jesus sends the disciples, he says to teach everything that I've taught you and to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which means no more than our mission is to draw other people into that same life of God that we've been drawn into through our baptism and our faith and our receiving God's Holy Spirit. And it's for all. Um, and who's going to tell the all? that would be you folks. Uh, that's, what, that's what we're called to do, to go and make God's life known through our lives lived in this world. Well, it's a mystery why people like Reese's Pieces, and it's a mystery why your mum loves you. But you kind of know, although you can't prove it, that your mum does love you. And, and that kind of makes a big difference in this world. It creates your identity. It, it fashions who you are as a human being. You may not be able to explain to me what the internal nature of God is like. And if you can, I'm deeply concerned and will help you later on. It, it's enough to leave it as mystery, like the love that your mother has or the number of people loving Reese's Pieces. Uh, but, but that it's mysterious doesn't mean you cannot know God or be known by God or be sent by God into this world. It's like your mum loves you. God loves you. Loves you so much that he sent his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you. Like your mum, God wants to be in relationship with you. Um, and like your mum, God would love you to live your best life and not make a hash of it. But if you do, he'll love you regardless. And so we're called on Trinity Sunday to an aspect of worship, of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, of being drawn into a spiritual life, of engaging in our hearts and minds and souls with the life of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and in a missional life, being sent to live God's life in this world. Let's be still for a moment or two of reflection. We stand together to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our and and those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. for the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Richard, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for those listed in the bulletin and those we name before you now. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O, o God, our King. And we, we pray for all who have died, especially John Lonsdale, for whom the altar flowers are given in loving memory, and those we name before you now. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Amen. Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let's stand together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Let's greet one another. Peace. 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 Peace.
Do take a seat for a moment. A very warm welcome to St. James this morning. Great to have you here. Um, there is uh, coffee and refreshments after church, so I invite you back to that. Um, also, we could do one or two more people volunteering on our sort of coffee schedule, so if that's you, uh, do think about signing up for that. Uh, just one or two things uh, to say. The first is that Vacation Bible School is coming up on July the 15th. We're just going to do a one-day Vacation Bible School, so you don't have to commit yourself to, to everything, but we'd love to have plenty of engagement, uh, not just from, if you know um, anyone sort of from the ages of 4 to 10, 11 who'd like to come, do invite them and get them to sign up online. But we could do with volunteers as well. So if you were able to volunteer for that, we'd love to have you. You can email the uh, church office, and I'll put a sign-up sheet out next week um, for you to be able to um, sign up for that. So we'd love to have lots of people involved. Um, because we um, do do it now rather than on, Jan on July the 14th, so because we're concerned to be uh, a, a good, responsible, safe church church, uh, we do need to run people through background checks if they're working directly with children, which is no big deal. We will take all the lifting from you and explain how to do it, but it will take a couple of weeks. So, so please uh, do think about signing up and uh, get ahead of the curve on that. That would be wonderful. Um, we sent out a questionnaire to you, which uh, hopefully most of you would have got through email. It's a questionnaire. It's, there's, a, there's 101 questions. Um, and uh, basically they ask you, uh, do you like this? Uh, sort of like it. Mm, uh, not really. No. It's, it's, it's that. It's, it, it, so there's 101 questions. You just have to go through it. You know, kind of read it and make a, make a quick choice. Um, and it's going to help us um, think about the direction that we're being called by God to move forward as a con congregation. If you did not get that email, um, then just simply send an email to the parish office and Luan will send, send you the link out so that you're able to participate and engage. Um, the record so far goes to Rich Karango for taking 25 minutes to complete this quiz online. Um, those who are less quick speed readers and typers, there's been a couple of people who it's taken an hour or so to go through. So, You'll know, whether, you'll know how long to budget, uh, according to how familiar you are with all the technology. But you will be able to do it. Uh, just if you're slow with computers, just settle in with your preferred beverage in the evening and uh, a little bit of time to, to, to think and pray. But we'd really love people to engage uh, with that process. And then in July, we're going to be organizing a number of gatherings, uh, which will get some of us gathered together in smaller groups just to ask together what is it that we love about St. James um, and uh, what are our hopes and uh, you know, wishes for the future. We've got hopes and dreams for what's yet to come. So I'm looking forward to engaging in, in that kind of way too with you all. Last thing, sorry, this is a long announcement, um, is today is a first Sunday of the month. Yes. So uh, it's a Sunday in which we, get, we take up all the cash in our offering goes to support the Lord's Pantry, which helps people in food insecure. So I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity, particularly for those of us who are not food insecure and know where our next meal is coming from, uh, to really help and reach out to our neighbors. So if you did not take the opportunity on the way in, uh, the opportunity will still remain on, on the way out to participate in, in that kind of way in which we can serve our community. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting people of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. James and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God sustain you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and pour his Spirit upon you that his love might be known in this world through you. And may his blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. It has been said that one of the holiest moments of our worship service is when the people of God, who have been nurtured in the Word and fed in the sacrament, go forth from the church into the world. The building we are in is not the church. You and I, we the people, are the church. Our service here this morning has ended, and now our service in the world begins. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.